All right, uh, my name is Brian Norman. I work for JetBrains on the Kotlin compiler team, and I am here to talk to you about Power Assert. But first, we're going to start with crafting an assertion. So if you're new to testing, you might naively think that assert true is a good assertion to use. And if we're testing the size of Fellowship of the Ring here, we'd say, oh, great, we'll just check that the size is equal to 9. Bummer. So the condition here is really clear. We know what we're testing. But the failure here is quite useless. All we know is that the size is not 9. We don't know if there are more members or less num members. So we could check some documentation and find assert equals. And we say, OK, well, the expected value is 9. The actual values is members.size. We'll run that. And OK, great. We know that there were only eight members of the fellowship or there are only eight members of the fellowship, but we don't know who's missing, right? So the error message is better, um, but we don't get any intermediate values. We can try adding a message here and just say, all right, well, I'm just going to dump the members as a string. And then when this fails, we'll finally see that it's Bohemir, rip Bohemir, that is missing from the fellowship. So finally, we have a complete error message that actually gives us some useful information. But we very easily forgot to add that error message. And now this error message is kind of a maintenance burden. Every time we change the condition, we have to change the message. Anytime we change how the code might work in the test, we have to make sure that we've updating all of our messages to make sure that they're outputting useful information. And this can be something that's very easy to miss as we're updating tests, because if the tests continue to pass, then we don't know until the test fails that we're not getting a useful error message. So we might reach to a more complex assertion library. Here, as an example, I'm using assert k. So we can say, all right, here's my subject members, and I want to assert that the size is 9. This also gets us a really useful error message telling us what the actual size was, what the expected size was, and it will uh, provide a two-string of the subject. So we, again, have a nice complete error message. But now we've got this other issue where we've moved away from just the common logic that we would naturally use in production code to now we have this whole set of functions here, extension functions, that we have to remember or look up for all of the different cases that we might have in our tests. And while assert k provides a lot of useful extension functions for common built-in types, if we have our own custom types, then this quickly becomes a different kind of burden where we have to write our own extension functions depending on what kind of assertions we're making. And then, of course, assert k is not the only choice. There are many very good assertion libraries out there that exist. And this can be a topic of discussion and bike shedding between developers on a team. Which assertion library, which test framework do we use? So obviously, there are some issues here that we want to be able to solve. And I'm hoping that Power Assert can address some of these. So what is Power Assert? All right, so let's go back to that first example, where we just said members.size is equal to 9. Yes. We're not going to get a good, useful error message here. But if we add the new Power Assert compiler plugin that's available in 2.0 and is now bundled with each release of Kotlin, instead of just this error message, we now get this error message. The compiler plugin, whoop, the compiler plugin is able to recognize all of the intermediate values that you used in your parameter and is able to pull them all out and provide them as the default error message. And this means that you can now start to write more natural production looking assertions. 
This also extends to more complex examples. If you're doing more complex Boolean expressions, here, of course, is a, a totally wild example. Um, we get an error message that shows each line and what the values were there. And this understands Boolean short circuiting so that it won't display lines that weren't executed. But a cert doesn't have a contract, and so you can't make not null checks with it and get smart casting. But a cert true does. So to port support this, we can configure the Power Assert plugin, and we can tell it what functions we want it to transform. By default, if you don't define anything, it will only transform the assert function. But here, we are going to provide assert true. And when we do that, we'll get that same error message style for assert true as well. Learning here that Aragorn is 87 years old. Sometimes, precondition checks for functions also need to have custom messages. And while I'm not necessarily suggesting that you should do this in a library where you might want a more tailored error message, this could be useful for maybe server-side code where you're just dumping error messages into a log file that you're reviewing. So you can configure require as well. And by default, the plugin will only be applied to all test source sets. So we'd also then need to say, yes, I want to transform production code. We've kind of taken the stance that this is mostly going to get used in test, and we want it to be a bit more explicit if you're going to be enabling it for your production code or your main code. So this is how you would then add those source sets. And once you kind of override the default, you'll also need to specify all the test source sets as well. So with that configured, we can now see that, yes, Boromir died. It doesn't have to just be Boolean functions either. We can configure assert equals here, and we'd get the same output for all of the parameters in the function. And there's a subtle bug here in this test that if we could not find Aragorn and Boromir, that we'd get null is equal to null, and the test would actually pass. And so we might want to use assert not null in this case to assert that we did find Boimir and Aragorn. We can configure this one as well. And now we get a more eager failure that we were unable to find Boimir. OK, so those are some built-in examples, Kotlin test. But maybe you want to use this plugin on some functions that you write. So here is an example of a soft assertion library, where you might start an assert scope uh, that makes an assert function available to you, and that would collect all of the failures for all of the assertions that you make and kind of dump them at the end of the block. This is very nice if you're wanting to test multiple properties of a data class and you want to get through all of the properties. As we've seen, we've been mostly dealing with top-level functions here, but member functions are just fine as well. All we need is the example, uh, the class here, assert scope, and the function. We can use this then to check the age of all the members of the Fellowship of the Ring. But unfortunately, this isn't enough. And at compile time, PowerAssert is going to issue this warning, saying that it was unable to transform the assert function. And it's going to list the four function signatures that it's looking for. Under the covers, PowerAssert is rewriting the function call and trying to add a message as the last parameter of that function call. And so he's looking for an overload of that function that he can then add that uh, message. Or if you're already passing in a message to the function, PowerAssert will try to append the diagram to that existing message and pass that to the same function. So here are the four uh, signatures that it's looking for. And so if we go back, we can update our assert function to have a message parameter. It can be a default parameter of null here, for example, and it can even be a lambda for lazy construction. And now if we go back to our example 
and run it again, we'll see all of the diagrams for all of the different failures. All right, so hopefully this got you a little excited to give Power Assert a try, and I hope you do. And I want to take a look at some of the things that we're hoping to work on. So the diagram is built at compile time right now. Um, it's pretty naive, and one of the things that we want to work on is improving that diagram construction. Um, if you're familiar with Groovy's Power Assert feature, there's a bunch of other things that Groovy can do uh, when building its uh, diagram, compressing it, um, performing diffs on strings and collections. I think we can do both of these things as well, and I think we can even take this one step farther and say if you're comparing two data classes and that has a well-known equality function on that data class, i.e. you have not overridden the equality function, maybe we can look and look into that data class to see what properties are different between the data classes and show you that diff as well. And maybe this can even work if you have a very nested structure of data classes. So there's lots of exciting things that we can do there. As you've seen, the user side burden for this compiler plugin is a little heavy right now. You have to define all the functions that you want transformed. Uh, we want to add out of the box support for Kotlin.test since Kotlin kind of controls that API. That's something that we can easily add, but we don't want to leave other people out of the fun here. Um, and so how do we support third-party assertion libraries or just you know, other libraries that want to take advantage of the power assert features? And then what does this feature actually look like when it's added into Kotlin? Is it power assert or is it some other generic feature that makes power assert more of just a library? Uh, we're exploring all sorts of ideas in this area. Okay, so please try power assert. Um, the docs are available here. Uh, Kotl.in, power-assert will take you directly to the Kotlin link docs. And of course, if you run into compilation errors or just strange diagrams that are a little bit different, there's a bunch of ed edge cases in the, in the Kotlin language that I'm sure will produce very weird diagrams. And so we want to get some feedback on all of that. There is a Slack channel that uh, we created. Uh, so if you want to join the community there, maybe get some help setting things up, uh, you can go to the Kotlin link Slack, power-assert. And then if you want access to these slides, um, they're available at that website as well. And with that, I want to thank everybody for coming. I encourage you to leave some constructive feedback on the app. And thank you.